The preset list in Tune Tracks Easy Mix 3, it's a container that holds everything, whether it's a grab and go preset just to keep going or whether it's that perfect preset that's gonna ace that sound you're looking for. Hopefully after this video, your workflow will feel optimized. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for complete courses and hundreds of free videos just like this one. I have a Facebook and Discord group, great communities. Links to those are down below. Let's get started. I'm gonna start a new empty project. And on this right panel, this is the preset list right over here. Unless you're in compact view, then the preset list will be its own tab right here. There's over 900 presets in this preset list. And that's if you only own Easy Mix 3. That's how many presets come with the, the stock program. And there'll be many more if you own additional Easy Mix packs. I'm over here at tunetrack.com on the Easy Mix Packs page. There just happens to be a sale, but when you're ready to add to your collection, you can just buy extra smaller packs, not with 900 presets, and add them to your collection. And you'll see them pop up on the similarity map and pop up in that preset list. Now, over on the preset list, you basically have the tools right here and they're kind of small and they're tucked up in that corner which doesn't imply that they're super important but they are the most important thing to help you find your exact tone if you don't understand exactly what those lists do those tools up there you will not find your exact tone let's say we selected some filters on the filters tab which in turn gives us search results over here in our preset list and Majority of time of what you're doing, you're probably going to see a large amount of search results here. Let's say anywhere from 30 to 1,000 presets. That's a pretty dense amount of information, especially when it's just stacked vertically in front of you. So if we go over to the sort by menu, the first option is name. And there's not a ton of continuity to name. Let's say I was looking for a jazz preset or a metal preset. It's not like all the jazz ones say jazz in the name or say metal in the name. Some of them probably do but most probably don't. A better example would be, let's say you're looking for an equalizer. It's not like it's gonna say EQ in the name or equalization in the name. This first preset says one kilohertz control. One kilohertz is a frequency in the spectrum. So I know that's EQ. If I click on it, here's our macro fader right here that probably controls one kilohertz. I'm not sure, I haven't heard it, but looks pretty straightforward. The second preset says four string juice. So that's probably a bass preset because basses have four strings or down here it says 51 carve, you know, 51 VH. You know, those are probably hard rock, heavy metal amplifier tones. So do you know audio production lingo? Well, if you do, these names will probably make a lot of sense to you. If you don't, maybe name isn't the right way to sort for you. But name sorts in alphabetical order, starting with numbers and then going through the alphabet. And if you want to reverse that order, you simply select the menu and go down to the bottom under order and hit reverse list. Since I already have a preset selected, it will reverse the list, but it also put me at the bottom of the list like this. So it did reverse the order, but now I'm at the bottom of the list. I got to go back up. That won't happen if you didn't already select a preset, just a little, little quirk right there. So that is sorting by name. Let's take note of what we actually see here per preset in the preset list. We see the name and we're always going to see the name there. Underneath it in this sub area, we see the mix pack that the preset derives from. If you only purchased Easy Mix 3, you only see three options, Easy Mix 1, Easy Mix 2, or Easy Mix 3, nothing else unless you buy additional add-on packs. So you see the name and you see the pack by default, which you can change and we'll do later. So acknowledging what information's there, let's go by the sort menu. Type, instrument, pack name, genre, and producer. Let's knock one, two, three, four. Let's knock five of those out right now because they all work the same, okay? If I select type, this subtext underneath the name changes to type, which is fantastic because it's automatic. Check it out in three, two, one. Now under the name, we do see the mix pack, but it's not the priority text underneath the name. Now the type is the priority text. Since we're mixing by type, if, since we're already conveniently on the mil filters tab, you can see under type, it goes amplifiers, auxiliary, group bus, insert, master. Well, we sort by alphabetical order here. So all the amplifiers are first. Let's get our search results down a little bit so this list isn't so huge, okay? 
Let me choose metal. Now we have just metal in the preset list and we're sorting by type. So amplifiers are first. And if we scroll down, there's a lot of metal amplifiers in Easy Mix 3. All right, cool. <laughs> I got a wall. Here's auxiliary after amplifier. As we can see, auxiliary is next in type. And then we'll see group bus insert and master. And I don't want to spend too much time, but there's insert master at the end. Okay. Now it works the same for those other four next options. If we select instrument, now we see we're sorting by this column. Bass is first. These are all not highlighted because none of these, there's no metal cowbell, unfortunately. <laughs> bass, cymbals, drums, generic, electric guitar, hi-hat, kick. And we're starting with bass and it just goes down alphabetically. And there's a lot of guitar there. Yep. And kick drum there. So that's how it works. You know, uh, let's do producer real quick since you kind of see the workflow at this point, I hope. If we go to producer, I don't even have my producer column up. But here's all the producers that made metal presets. Remember, we have this metal filters tab selected already. And, you know, Daniel's done a bunch of products for TuneTrack. He does his own products as well. I um, did the Area 33 stuff, you know, Forrester. I think he did um, the some of the progressive stuff. Uh, There's Frederick, Frederick from Area 33. So if you're familiar with the TuneTrack roster, you know, sorting by producer actually might make sense because you're curious what those guys are doing. So that's those five options, type, instrument, pack name, genre, producer. That's how they all work. And when you select them in the sort by list, that subtext will appear and prioritize. So you got your bearings you can sort very fast, very efficiently. So the next one in the list is number of effects. This is super cool because in Easy Mix 2, like you just had two macro knobs, you could only control two different things. Easy Mix 3 and the Easy Mix 3 presets can have up to 10. So sorting by number of effects is super important. Um, right out of the gate, these presets only have one single effect. As we can see, here's just one macro fader. And I'll reverse order so we can do this quickly. This one has 10 effects and it doesn't mean you access 10 effects. It just means there's 10 effects in this preset, um, though you do get quite a bit of control, the more effects that are listed. So sometimes there's some secret sauce behind the scenes that you cannot access, but regardless, when you sort by number of effects, you know, you've got just a quick throw and go because there's only one effect on there, or you have a lot of tweakability because there's more than one effect in there. So that really gives you a vibe of how much work you're in for, depending on what preset and how many effects that preset has. This next one's pretty fun because I really like the similarity map. I'll select it and I want to see more usability from it. And the sort by list, when you select similarity, it does that. Let me just select a random preset right out of this uh, mix utility theme or solar system. I select a kick two. And as you can see, we've kind of uh, set up shop on this planet or star here. And as we go through the preset list, we're going to stay pretty local to this selection. We'll you know, explore the nearby planets, stars, and moons. And we're not going to end up way over here and way down here. Check it out. It's pretty cool. And take note, I'm just using the down arrow on my keyboard, the up and down arrows on your keyboard. Once you select a preset after it's selected right here, the down and up key keys will work on your keyboard. So that's the similarity sort. It's pretty fantastic and gives you more usability for the similarity map tab. Just a quick note about how easy mix has a long term memory, not a short term memory. So in these menus over here, Easy Mix will remember what menu choices you had last, even after you close the program and open it back up. And that might confuse you for a few minutes because we were last working on similarity. So the similarity sort is up. So if I selected rock and I was a little baffled about why 
my results list is being sorted like this, hopefully you check your sort by menu because it doesn't default to name like when you first open Easy Mix after you purchase it. And another quick note specifically about similarity is there's less clues that you have that selected because when you select similarity, there's no subtext underneath the preset name to let you know you've selected similarity. It'd be pretty cool if it had like the solar system name like Mix Utility or something under it, but it doesn't. So that's just something to keep in mind. Easy Mix 3 has a long-term memory. It will remember your menu choices even after you close it. Let's talk about key commands real quick. As I was saying earlier, after you select a preset, you can then use your up and down arrows to navigate up and down your list of presets. Let's consider all these visible presets one page of presets. So you can also use the page down key on your keyboard to advance a full page worth of presets. It's pretty cool, especially if you're scanning quickly and you don't want to click, 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 or tap, 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 tap. So I'll hit page down. Now I'm on the last preset on this page. I'll hit down again. Now I'm on a new page. You know, I'm covering like 15-ish presets at a time right now. So that's pretty cool. And page up, we'll go in the opposite direction. At least with my computer set up, my screen resolution, it's not missing any presets when I page up and page down. I assume it'll be the same experience for you. Also cool is if you hit end on your keyboard, it'll go from wherever you are in the presets list to the bottom. Here we go. Three, two, one. Now I'm at the bottom. Or if you hit home, it'll bring you up to the top of your presets list, no matter where you are in three, two, one home. It's pretty cool. Let's check out the show in list. And it's really just a tiny add on feature. I love it. I want to see as much detail as possible, but you know, that's subjective. Some of you guys out there are probably like real chaotic, creative minds and you just want to throw and go and, and use your ears. And some of us are more secretarial elite style and you want as much details in your face as possible. And everyone in between, I think my subscribers know where I'm at in that equation, but under the show in list, here's what's selected by default pack name, user preset, pack icon, and sort by select, that's something different. Let me deselect that right out of the gate. So in every preset, we see the name of the preset and we see the pack that it's from. Why do we see the pack that it's from? Because in show and list, by default, pack name is selected. That's why we always see the pack name under the presets by default. So if I deselected this, now we only see the names of the presets and nothing else. So the show and list basically gives you the description and the details under the preset name. That's its purpose, which is awesome. So let me just select everything type instrument, pack name, genre. You can see the information populating now producer number effects and included effects icon. Well, let's start with, let's do the easy ones first included effects in parentheses. It says info icon. This is pretty cool. When that's so, when you check this, you get this information icon. And if you mouse over it, that tooltip appears. So we know this has one effect because we selected for it to show number of effects. But when you mouse over the information icon, it tells you what effect that is. Let's get a busier preset real quick. There's three in this one. All right. There's three in this one right here, three effects in this one. Let's mouse over this. This, the three effects in this are hall reverb, filter delay, and bit crusher. That's pretty cool. Let's select this real quick. Length and amount. How do I know bit crusher is actually in this preset? It's behind the scenes. It's the special sauce. So that information icon is actually finally revealing to us a little bit of what's happening in this preset. That's not visually in front of us. That's why that icon is so cool. If you care about details, right? You can't adjust bit crusher. You don't even know it's there. Maybe we'll hear it if we play this effect, but now we know what creates this. So this information icon really gives you the recipe. This one has five effects right here. Gives you the recipe of what's happening in there. Um, that's actually a bit to read right there. So that's a good amount of, I don't want to read through it and spend two minutes just on this preset. So information icon, 
Not only does it let you know what you're about to see here, but it lets you know about what you don't see. So Easy Mix 3 is way less secretive than Easy Mix 2, and that's really cool for end user experience. So included effects, effects icon, that's taken care of. Pack icon's easy. Pack icon is just the image to the right of your preset. It kind of gives you a vibe of what pack it's coming from. So I don't know why you would turn it off, but there it is off, nothing, right? And actually, now that I see it, I might as well cover it so we cover everything here. This star here, which has nothing to do with what we're talking about in this menu, that's so you can save this preset, Acoustic Bass in a Room, as a favorite because you think you're going to use it often. So I'll select this star. The star stays there forever. And then if you want to access it later, you select your favorites filter chip. More on that in the upcoming episode. Look for it, okay? I want to show you user presets in the show in list, but I actually didn't have any user presets. I had to make one real quick, hence me cutting. I found a preset under the master category, under the master type, and I manipulated it, made it my own sound and saved it as a user preset, something we'll cover in the near future. And in the show in list, as you can see, user preset is selected. So let me just show you what that looks like. So, you know, it's right around here somewhere. It's right here. If you have user presets, you'll see the text right there and you'll know that that preset is one that you made on your own. It's not a stock tune track preset. So that's what that selection does. Let me clear my filters. Lastly, I just want to talk about and then show you the coolest thing is when you start selecting all these, depending on what you want to see, of course, you can say, I don't want to see genre. I don't want to see producer. You know, you can really customize how much text comes up here but when you finally decided it's all just piled in there and you really got to poke through it what's really fantastic is this sort by feature which is not checked yet before i check it i want to point out that on the sort by menu when name is selected and when similarity is selected it doesn't matter whether this is checked or not it will not work so let's check Anything from type, instrument, pack name, genre, producer, and number effects. I'll select genre. And then in the show and list, I'll select sort by. And what's going to happen so you see it changes? Right now, under the name, it says insert, then it says genre. We want to control the order of this mess of information. Insert, which is type, is first. But we want genre to be first because we're sorting for genre. So genre is probably the most important information. So then you go in the show and list, select sort by, watch this information reorder in three, two, one. Now out of this subtext, the genre is the priority to see in the subtext because sort by is selected. So it's pretty darn cool. So I'll switch that over to pack name. Now we see the pack name. Producer, now we see the producer, it's tune track on this one. Type, which is insert, which is also the default if you have name or similarity selected, okay? That's why name and similarity, they don't really affect much, right? So that's what that sort by check does. It takes this mess of details and kind of organizes it and gets what you're focused on up front. The last moment or two just might be information overload. And I understand if you're new to Easy Mix or new to audio production, that might have just been a lot to hear someone barking at you. I love the details though. But take two things away from this video before proceeding. The sort by list actually changes what you're looking at. It manipulates your results. That's a really important list. You click on something there, things get reordered. You're presented with something different. The show in list does not sort anything at all. It just provides you additional information. Sort by changes your preset list. Show in just gives you more information. Hold on to that and you'll be all good. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for complete courses and hundreds of free videos. I have a Facebook and Discord groups. Links are down below in the description. If you want to see me again, hit subscribe. If you want to make my day, give me a comment below, even if it's just saying hi, or hook me up with a donation at shootyschool.com for my efforts. I'll see you on the next one.